Well, Mulahe was a short visit for us this time. We thought we were going to stay a little bit longer, but we've made the decision that we need to um, we need to get back to the U.S. And we've come up with a plan. We said we had some some big decisions that we made, and one of the big decisions that we made was we were going to plot out a course and just go for Argentina. We've been um, taking our time trying to figure out how things work and we realize we just need to go one day at a time. Before we do that, we need to make sure that Lindsay has some routine tests and is 100% medically clear to do so. So we're gonna head back to Florida, but we haven't been back to Florida in, uh, in, in a year. And uh, so we'll have a lot to catch up on with friends and family there. It's a long trip, we're gonna break it up, but first we're gonna head up to Guerrero Negro and Guerrero Negro is an opportunity for us to go whale watch. We were able to see them already once and we wanted to have a little more personal experience one last time before we leave Baja. And from there, we're gonna be moving pretty quickly to get up to Arizona to check in with some friends before driving through Texas. I don't know if you've ever driven through Texas. We did it on the way over, it was not fun. We we're gonna do it one more time on the way back to Florida. And then maybe when we go to, well, that's gonna be hard to get to Mexico without going through Texas. So I guess we'll see Texas again. But for the time being, we're going to be leaving Mulahe and making our way north for the day and then continue north through the rest of this week into the weekend. <laughs> that we've had oh, really? to date. He went through everything. My dirty undies again. <laughs> Which I'm not gonna tell you how many days I wore my dirty undies before I put them in the dirty undie pile. Gross. <laughs> um, this place outside of San Ignacio, just north, the checkpoint there, by far is the most thorough checkpoint. Um, out of all the checkpoints. Out of all the checkpoints. We got hassled on our way down. And I, I do mean hassle. It was nighttime. We knew we shouldn't be driving at night. We were just trying to get to San Ignacio. We don't have anything to worry about. It's not like we're ever worried we're going to get caught. They could just ask us questions and, you know, and tell them the answers and on they go. But anyway, that guy tossed everything. I don't want to say tossed. He went through everything, unzipped every zipper in our backpack. He went through every drawer, every one of our little medicine cabinet drawers opened up the above the um, really? salon and he went through everything went through all of our silverware he opened us fun he opened up the cabinets and you know what happens when <laughs> we drive and cabinets open up afterwards stuff falls everywhere so it was falling all over him <laughs> nice enough guy probably just doing his job I don't know why we get hassled every time but if that's what they need to do to feel like they're keeping this place safe by all means just another gringo headed north at this point. So, yeah, I don't feel like I'm violated. I, don't, I mean, people look at my underwear all the time. It's just part of living in Baja, right? Yeah. When you come to Baja, you'll hear about topes and you'll see topes everywhere.
tope is a massive speed bump. We have lots of different types of topes here in Baja. We have the actual tope, and then there's the fake tope, and then there's the maybe it's there, maybe it's not tope. There's the half tope. There's all sorts of topes, and we're going to try to show you those different kinds of topes in Baja uh, because you definitely need to be aware of them. Some of them are going to make you screech your brakes to a halt and they're not there and then others you're going to think, oh, there's not a tope here because last time I almost broke myself trying to stop and then you hit this big large tope. So anyway, we're going to we're going to give you a tour of the topes here in Baja. Is it a tope? There's no sign. Tope. driving through what seems to be no man's land. It's huge salt flats. Um, obviously they get salt from here. It's being uh, it's being mined, but it feels like being in the Arctic all over again, doesn't it? Yeah. Like when we got up to Dead like Horse. Flat, and nothing. There's some color to this over here. It's red. Yeah. But the roads just go off in different directions. There's one road to get to the whales, and then there's all the different all the different roads uh, for the workers and for the industry to be able to get to the different uh, salt flats. But it is pretty creepy. It's like into the world kind of feel. It really does feel like pulling up in a dead horse. If you haven't seen that, you should see that. We'll link to it. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> We've got 17 kilometers more to drive through here and then we should hope we pop out at the other end where there are whales. Muchos ballenas. Many whales. Have arrived at the Ojo de Libre campground. It is 200 pesos and you get a plapa, pretty decent plapa. Uh, we're parked just off the lagoon just a little bit. You can see the water. Don't know if we'll see any whales from the shore. We might see some. And uh, it's pretty nice. There's um, several plapas and it's not busy, but I'm sure on a beautiful day in a certain time of year it's a lot busier than it is today we unfortunately have come here and when the weather's not so nice but hopefully we will get out on the water tomorrow and see some gray whales um, right down the road is a restaurant and where you can book a tour to go see the whales and it's usually around 50 to 55 dollars per person to go out on a boat and you want to get there first thing in the morning like 8 a.m uh, to get the tour it's pretty much first come first serve on who gets on the boat so we'll be getting up bright and early and hopefully going to see some whales we've had a change of plans and we are heading north pretty fast we only spent a couple of days in mulahe when we were originally planned to spend a week um, and the reason why we're doing that is because my stomach is still not 100 percent 
And the original plan was that we would slowly make our way north, get to Arizona, and then fly me out to Florida so that I can go see my GI doctor, my established GI doctor that I've been seeing for over 10 years now, and get a full checkup to make sure everything is okay uh, before we head south into mainland Mexico. But some things have changed and because of the whole coronavirus scare going on, I uh, really don't want to fly, especially into a busy international airport. So me and Chris have made the decision to drive back to Florida. We think that that's going to be best. Um, so that is our plans. And we are quickly making our way north out of Baja and then making the drive across the country back to Florida. And hopefully, hopefully everything checks out when I do see my doctor. But of course, we will keep everyone updated on what is going on.